So I'm sure most of you have seen the Tiffany um, Air Force Ones that are due to be coming out very soon in March. And obviously most people who have taste, who have been, you know, part of sneaker culture for a long time and who have seen great colorways of this sort of Tiffany-esque from, you know, the likes of Diamond Supply back in the day and whatnot, you will definitely know that this is definitely a horrible colorway in terms of a Tiffany dunk. And if you know, Tiffany & Co is owned by LVMH and one of the sons of the owner of LVMH, um, Alexander Alno, is now kind of heading up Tiffany and doing all that stuff because I think he was working with Ramoa, which was under T um, LVMH also, but daddy told him to go work for Tiffany. So here he is doing his work at Tiffany and obviously, you know, doing his best to sort of damage and tarnish the branding culture. But okay, given an Air Force One to do, which I think is a weird model anyway, if you're Tiffany personally, but still, it's a basically a classic model that kind of, you know, um, defies genres, defies racial lines, economic lines. So maybe it covers all things in that regard. Cool. But then I just don't understand the logic of taking an Air Force One low and basically making it majority black with the exception of a Tiffany blue swoosh. Of course, the materials are different. I know the upper looks like, a, I don't know if it's a velvet, a suede, a nubuck. And then you've got the eye lace stay, the lace stay bit sort of section on the top here, which is sort of made up in a tumbled leather. And for whatever reason, they decided to have like tubular laces on lows, which is a bizarre choice because those laces have to like work the best on highs. I don't think they work the best on lows. This is just my opinion again. What do I know in this regard? But, and then of course you've got the leather lining. So I just don't get the logic of having an all black shoe for a Tiffany, for me personally, because I feel like one of the things that made the Diamond and Supply Co shoes really good is the breakup of the white midsole, of the fact that it's got black and Tiffany and the silver essence on the swoosh. And even if you look at the all black, some of the sample pairs, I think these were samples, right? The black, the white and the yellows, even the all black one that Diamond and Co Supply made ages ago, big up Nick Tache, Nick Diamonds, even the black ones still have a little bit of a breakup, even in terms of the contrast stitching on some of the paneling here on the upper, it helps to break up the, you know, the shape a little bit and kind of divide the cut, spread the colors across the shoe a little bit more. The white midsole, of course, adds to it and whatnot. But just in general, it just looks a little bit more desirable and classic. Even that kind of canary uh, colorway here at the top here is absolutely beautiful in terms of um, getting across the luxuriousness and desirability of Tiffany's, right? You'd imagine so much so. But I don't know, man. Whatever reason, Alexander, I know maybe his team. Um, there was another lady also who kind of does Tiffany. I forgot her name. I think she recently left Tiffany, if I'm not mistaken. So people are saying that she was the one that spearheaded this design and it's not Alexander Arno. Who knows? But whoever designed these, I feel like did a really poor job. And this is definitely a missed opportunity. On top of some of the horrible, horrible, poem, like, I think stuff like this. They should have maybe seen how the tide was shifting about this online and the reception. Because the thing is, I guess, in some regards, it doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what most people say in terms of the looks and whether or not these are nice or not. Because essentially what's going to happen is that they'll sell out and they'll still resell for a gazillion bucks. So they're probably going to retail for like, what, 200 to $400, maybe more. And they're probably going to resell, you know, they're probably minimum going to be like a thousand pounds. So clearly in in terms of a brand in terms of sellout culture in terms of all that virality and limited edition nonsense everyone's going to be happy tiffy's going to be happy nike's going to be happy that they sold them out they've got lines around the block you know bonus points if someone ends up getting shot somewhere for a pair of these right everyone's going to be over the moon wow someone got shot great amazing more virality add that to the add that to the marketing deck for when we kind of go push somebody else to do a collab so clearly that doesn't matter what i say in that regard but I just think in terms of just what they look like, forget what the collab is. They just don't look great. They're not that impressive. If anything, these are giving very much like JD Sports. Like if you take away that swoosh and you, you know, lower the gradient a little bit and you make that swoosh green, you make it navy blue, suddenly these are not impressive in the slightest. And if you're able to take away one design element and reduce them to absolutely nothing and they're not really special in any way, shape or form, to me, that doesn't make them special. And then you can say, oh, the special thing is a little Tiffany hit at the back of the shoe. 
which you know make sure you don't wear these shoes when you go flipping bowling or anything right because that someone is definitely gonna just probably snip the flipping back tiffany thing off the you know of your shoe or if anything they might just take the entire flipping um shoe itself because obviously of the value and obviously on the outside they've got some of these little tiffany hits there on the inside circle the circ on the on the outsole circular tread here which looks pretty nice the uh, the insole looks probably the nicest bit about the shoe i'm not gonna lie it's pretty nice seeing the tiffany blue um insole there with this sort of like silver accents which looks really nice again the tie in that is really weird because these silver accents are seen nowhere if anything part of me thinks maybe if they added the silver accents to the swoosh in terms of that that might have worked but then it would have looked very similar to the virgil designed off white air force ones maybe one of the ones for the galleries that was black with the silver swoosh that maybe looked too similar to that so maybe that's the reason why they didn't do it but overall i think the choice for these sort of tubular rope laces for lows is bizarre personally for me i just think it looks odd and then it kind of reminds me of those like crappy you know those guys and gals that do those horrible customs where they where they kind of over dye a pair of air force ones and then stick some massive rope laces into them and try and make them look like skate shoes it's just you know people that try and fashionize air force ones that like, really get on my nerves either you just make a new shoe or you wear the shoe the way it's been you know made to be worn kind of thing and just kind of mix it into what you originally wear not everything has to be fashionized it's just annoying but anyway roll on um again not really impressed by most of it i think it looks terrible and another thing that makes it look really bad i think also is the fact that the promotion and the rollout for this was horrible i feel like those pictures of Alexandra is that I think I'm sure that's his name right Alexander um sitting at some basketball game wearing these shoes laced horrible first of all they're not laced properly they're laced like in a Nike way like he just pulled them out of his flipping seeding pair right he got a box sent home and then he just pulled them out and put them on his feet no relacing nothing at all no kind of taking because it's me I'm taking out all the laces and I'm doing the lace what are you meant to do you're meant to kind of lace them from the bottom here over and then they're meant to go over this way and then over that way right not meant to go under meant to go over so you get like a nice sort of like v pattern going up and obviously for bonus points if on the right foot the the right lace has to go over and the left foot the left has to go over but if you know you know if you don't you don't don't you know whatever it may be but he just sat down at that basketball game with a pair of on and he looked so awkward so uncool so clumsy so trash that i don't think that helped in terms of the corners appeal of this because i don't think any of the cool kids are looking at these and thinking these are hard if anything they're just going to be desirable because they're limited edition the thing they probably should have done earlier on is probably got someone from the you know the clout instagram outfit generation to put these on and to kind of really freak them that might have added to the law in the same way that mischief did with those astro boots like see them to some really cool influential influencers um and then get them to kind of style them in a cool way and then that might have kind of turned the tide on them but just objectively from a picture because i'm happy that I didn't do that I'm happy i didn't get blinkered by someone wearing a crazy good outfit and making them look good um or just having really perfect size feet to make them look good i'm glad i just got to see the pure picture of the shoe and i was like you know what dud dead and if anything these made me want to get another pair because i originally had these when i when they first came out the tiffany sorry the the diamond supply uh, tiffany dunks i originally had a pair and i think i might have queued up to i think i might have got these at like slam city skates when they did a pop-up at no that wasn't i think slam city skate pop-up at nike towns when i got my what the dunks which unfortunately i got scammed for my first ever scam and last scam someone scammed me for those what the dunks i i purchased them went to resell them which maybe is my karma for reselling the shoe and then the person got me to send the money no got me to send them before them sending the money and then they didn't send them and then yeah just that, that kind of easy scam people to do back in the day horrible i still cry about it to this day but the tiffany dunks i got in that era but i remember when i got these i unfortunately got them in the wrong size they didn't have a size 10 so i had to get them in like a nine and a half and my feet already were growing back then and they're now growing to now i'm like a probably a ten and a half maybe an 11 even in dunks but i had these in nine and a half and i took out the insole i put them in the freezer i stretched i did as much as i could but they died after a while because my toe my big toe was pointing at the front like it was pointing, like pushing that flipping mud guard right in the front, really making it triangular shit. I think some people used to laugh at me and I didn't end up wearing them for too long and then I ended up kind of, you know, reselling them, um, you know, beaten and used for maybe like 400 quid or something back then, which is kind of crazy how they held their value. And you can see here on GOAT, they go for, um, I don't know what size, okay, 10.5, they go for already 3,717. So 
that makes sense that they're still holding their value to this level. But yeah, man, like I'm not really that impressed with these uh, Tiffany Air Force Ones, to be honest. I think they look pretty crap. Um, very, 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 very underwhelming. And um, they're due to come out when? It says here, official date. Release date has been expected to be March 7th, 2023. So I guess if you're interested, go and cop them. Retail's gonna, probably going to be about £400. Yeah, there we go, $400 retail. Release 